Hey, it's Andre, and it's time for another Friday Flying Update. Grand Tundra. Yeah, I flew last weekend. Yes, I finally flew, and it was a wonderful experience. I got to fly the Nano Talon, the ME163, even took my Phantom up, and of course, the Grand Tundra. So we'll skip right to the Grand Tundra. Uh, this aircraft is a work of art, really well designed, really well thought out, really. If I only had one complaint is they tried to stylize prop thing and the paint just peels off. So I'm actually gonna go and strip the white paint off or we'll do whatever, because uh, that, uh, that chipped up pretty quickly with just a little bit of snow and ice action, so. Um, it fits. This thing actually fits in my car. Yes, I need to take my w the wings off when I do it, but I've actually set it up so uh, when it goes into the back seat, the tail is kind of through the back seat and the nose is uh, towards the back of the car, and I actually can leave the wing struts on. Uh, and so the big next project for me to do is get some of that uh, that. Uh, insulating uh, the foam insulation stuff, similar stuff I used, the same stuff I used on my radiant wings. And I'm going to make some wing pockets so everything gets held in and contained. And I, uh, I had a little LED, uh, it's a little servo tester actually, and I use that case to hold all the clips and the four screws that go in the wings. So the thing really isn't complicated to put together. And you look at the video and and I taxied out, not even taxied out, I took off and I think the thing was up in the air within well under two or three feet. And that was with me flying on some very non-spec recommended batteries. My 6S 6200s and it flew fantastic. I actually dropped, uh, I hadn't got the CG information right away. And so I literally put the battery where I put it, which is like right in the front of the bulkhead, uh, just in front of the vent, uh, velcroed it down and strapped it in and I went flying and it flew magnificent. The actually only error I made in my remote and flying was I didn't set the two second delay on the flaps. So when I would transition, it would kind of bobble a little and, and, and disrupt the aircraft. And you did see me flip it over once and that was because I had my rates a little too low in the elevator and I could have had the CG off as well. It's hard to tell, but... The first flight out of the box was amazing, and I was just so happy to fly. It was, you know, I actually flew with no gloves on, which was like a rare treat as well. Uh, the only hiccup on that entire weekend was it was super windy. So I apologize for the quality of the audio, and I think I may have sorted it out. I, uh, I put a little bit of uh, fluff on top of my microphone uh, on my action cam. I am saving up to buy a new GoPro to improve the video quality. If I can get to 4K, then I can zoom in uh, on that shot if I shoot in 4K and, and just improve everything a little bit and even set up a clip mic. But the GoPro cameras or any of the other cameras are anywhere from two to $400 or 600 if you look at the new GoPro 6. Uh, and I'd rather buy batteries. So I've actually just ordered a set of 6S 3300s uh, based on the recommendation from other pilots like Tom and even Stuart and, and, and Steph and Steve. So um, speaking of Steve, this weekend we will have the Hobby King Durafly Navios manager or production manager uh, on the podcast for the RC After Hour podcast. It's Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Steve is being a champ. He's going to stay up late. It'll basically be his like midnight or one o'clock in the morning Australian time. And he's going to stay up to answer all your questions. So do tune in to rcafterhours.com slash live or check out our Facebook page and uh, see if you have any questions for Steve about this wonderful aircraft. I, I... I was over the moon uh, with how well this flew and the experience overall. Uh, I'd never flown 6S. Uh, obviously, I will be flying my Hawk later on, and it was just an amazing experience. And the guys tell me that once I switch over to the 3300s, uh, and you know, I, I should get my battery check out and check these guys, but I barely, ooh, wait a minute. I did quick little flights of each pack uh, just for the fun of it. And uh, I'm, I'm bad. I haven't discharged them, but I plan on going out tomorrow. So after four minutes of flying, I still have 9.68 or uh, nine, yeah, 3.9798 per cell uh, after four minutes of flying. So that's an indication that we'll be up there for a while with these batteries. And you're bombing around in pretty cold temperatures. So uh, I'm going to put these packs back in and fly them a little longer and go from there. So it has been quite the experience so again thank you to hobby king for allowing me to 
try this and yeah the blue is better color i like the green okay but the blue just it just looks so nice and it's such a nice present i think the 1700 is that just right size i know the carbon z is what like 80 plus inches so this is 67 inches or 1700 mil and it's just the right size of your aircraft i mean this is basically the maximum aircraft i think i can get in my car but with the wings off it loads in really nice i can even leave the wing struts on but it's like just another pin to put it in and the assembly is a snap as well. I mean, four screws and, and, and six uh, pins and you're in. And I actually have extra pins and extra screws I take with me to the field. And I'm just going to find the a better screwdriver that fits into this container. And like I said, and I throw that in there and off I go. So I think you're going to see a lot of flying from this aircraft. I could have installed skis. I've got some... Uh, some some uh, quantum skis that they don't sell anymore that might have worked, but th this thing had no issues in the snow or anything like that. It was just really responsive. So I'll tune up the route and I plan to go and fly tomorrow, even though it's going to be rather cold. Um, other aircraft, that Nano Talon sent to me by RC Moment was a absolute riot. I've got a few things I want to set up. I want to check a couple things as far as uh, I wasn't I wasn't sure what it was doing in advanced mode. It seems like if I hit the wing over and I clicked into a mode, it would do a little bobble. So I want to get in there. But it flew, like, without the stabilizer engaged, it flew great. And, and I had so much battery time after those quick flights. And I'm like, wow, this thing is quite the cruiser. So the, the running debate is whether I put a camera in here or if I go with a tilt unit. Uh, I only have a six channel receiver in there and obviously I'm using five of the six channels just to run the aircraft. So a six channel will get me my pan, I guess. Um, but the tilt's kind of fun, especially if you throw it in there. So eventually I will have to look into dropping in an eight channel receiver versus the, uh, the six I have in there immediately. And of course the, uh, the ME163 was fun. It was an interesting video. Again, I, I, all my cameras were freezing up and shutting down. So this one, it was just a, I'll throw a different camera on and try. And I launched the aircraft and it kind of sinks. And I have a moment of hesitation where I'm like, do I punch it or do I bail? And I'm like, oh, I'll just punch it. I firewalled it. And you can hear it just and off it went. And from there it had a great flight. It was actually really nice. And it was just one of those nice days where I was tracking really good and just enjoyed flying it. So it surprised me. It's a really good kit. It's got some nice equipment behind it too. So um, I'll probably keep flying that one for a bit and, and take it from there. Um, we did, or I did do the review uh, with the Epson uh, Moverio glasses and it was a really interesting experience i've actually requested to fly them again later on this year when the weather is nice now what was really interesting is i went to take off my antennas and part of the internal the the actual uh, teflon sleeve and pin from one of my antennas came out so uh we've uh, actually i went over to my mad scientist dad who uh, who took we took apart the radio and everything and he re-soldered and we did a continuity check and then we glued the teflon piece into the base of the the, the receiver unit so now that shouldn't come out because i end up i take my antennas my long range off every time i put it in the bag because it's the best way to transport it otherwise i would leave the whole thing assembled but then it's really bulky and takes up a lot of space so yeah at least it's resolved. It might explain some of the hits uh, I was having with the setup and, uh, and and some of the little interference bits we were seeing. Uh, I was seeing later in the year after I had actually done the conversion. So uh, I'm just pleased that they're back. I will do some more tests and some more range tests with it and, and, and just make sure everything is perfect and plan on enjoying that uh, flying the Phantom in May when I go down to Ohio. Uh, yeah, it's been quite the week and just it's just surprising just how better the week goes after I've had a couple of flights on, under my belt. Uh, you know, it's just that you relax, you enjoy life a little bit more, you get a little skip in your step kind of thing. I do have some uh, some wings coming in. Uh, Defiant Wings uh, emailed me and said, hey, are you interested in trying to, uh, in doing a, a Defiant 28? I believe that's what it's called. And uh, so, Sean, thank you for the offer, and I can't wait to uh, to get another wing going. I, I I've been so bad at not building those, so I think it's going to be one of those things where back to back to back, I will get all the wings ready for the spring. Uh, I mean, wings are pretty cool in the winter, but when they land, they tend to get a lot of snow shoved into them, so they're definitely a springtime uh, flying. Uh, I'll have this guy for my FPV, and of course, I still have my Micro Sky Hunter, which I'm going to get out flying, and a couple other ones. So, looks like this year is shaping up quite nice to be very interesting and dynamic. Uh, 
as you can hear in the background, printer or not, but the uh, 3D printer is going away. This is section number four for the left wing. I think there's like another three or four sections left, and then I got to jump onto the right wing. So I'll probably be done printing by the end of the month the way I'm going. So um, I kind of try and run it as much as I can when I'm home and monitoring it. So because, you know, I don't like leaving that thing unattended. So ah, there we go. Well, it's Friday, and it's like you see, there's daylight outside. We just did our daylight savings this week. Uh, and uh, it's, it's kind of nice, a little nicer in the afternoons and the evenings. So tomorrow's flying will feature, obviously, the Grand Tundra, and I'll probably bring out a couple other airplanes, depending on the wind conditions. I suspect it's going to be really cold, so that'll be transmitter mitt kind of flying. So uh, it won't be no gloves-free stuff. So, And I'll test out the microphone mod, and hopefully that'll uh, eliminate some of the thumbs down I was seeing because of the wind noise. I get it. I understand. I was disappointed, but there's sometimes when... As I said, you got to fly when you can fly because otherwise it was a really long, long break between flying seasons. So <sighs> there we go. I'm Andre. It's a Friday weekend. Remember the podcast on Sunday. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. Have a fantastic weekend. See you later.